these are the nights that I'm leaving behind. I'm parting ways with you, but you've been good to me. Thank you for getting me through the canopy trek, through the uh, Napoleon Island trek, and today through the Volcano National Park trek to visit with the gorillas. Bye. Maybe you'll go home and be with some, be kind to someone else. Yeah. And these to you, polo boots. You have been good to me. I've spent many nights in the clubs and the bars with you. <laughs> and oh, poor. Right now it's time to uh, relinquish control and may somebody else find some joy. <laughs> Clean these up and make it find some joy with these boots. Yeah. Because they're still a nice pair. They're just too dirty to take back with me. Exactly. Oh, shoot. <coughs> Oi. See? Little polo boots. Your own guy didn't even know Polo made boots. Who would have thunk it? Yep. Ralph Lauren. All right. <laughs> go. And we're back. And always black. <laughs> <laughs> always black, yes. You can't, you can't um, change that. Um. Or do we want to? Okay, so this is day 11. Because. No. Yeah, I'm no. <laughs> right? Because we leave tomorrow. So. It's 12. We spent 12 days. Mm. So, day 11 recap. And we're going to recap like the best. Uh, the best. Um, was it was yesterday the best day so far? Well, Definitely one of the best days of my life. One of the best, yeah. That for, for dang sure. Yesterday was such an awesome, amazing day. It didn't start off like, well, yeah, it, I mean, it, we had to wake up so dang early. Mm -hmm. um, we had to meet our driver at 4.30 a.m. Damasin. Damasin. Thank you so much. You took such good Man, care of us. Man, what a guy. What a guy. Such a gentle spirit. Yeah. That, that guy is such a nice guy. Um, just, uh, he's got a light around him. He does. Yeah. He does. And he's single. He's single. But he has a... Uh, he has four children. Four children. Between, I think, the ages of 13, 10, 13 and 23, I think. Yeah. <laughs> They're in about, so... Yeah, he You're a respectable <laughs> lady. Well, he doesn't want any more kids. So he needs a lady who's okay with, either has kids or okay with him having kids and doesn't want any more kids because kids are expensive, okay? And he's got four already. Can you attest to that? Yes. Are kids they expensive? Are expensive? Yes, they are. <laughs> so basically, if you've had your children uh, or you don't wish to have children, then maybe this is a matchup. Yeah, so hit us up. I want this information. Yeah, <laughs> we well, we we put his information on the video, so so we, we're not matchmaking. You do you, right, right. So miraculously, I didn't think we was gonna make it in the lobby to the lobby at four thirty, but we made it, and out the door, hey. it was four twenty seven, and I'm like, oh god, he <laughs> gave me an extra half hour of rest. Yeah, yeah. Instead of waking up at 3, we woke up at 3.30. So it gave us an hour mm -hmm. to get out the room. <clears throat> and we and went. were even lined out for a bit. Because <clears throat> we had done our bags the night before. Yeah, yeah. And we still got out the door at 4.27. Did we? Oh, we did. Yeah, we was like three minutes. I was counting the minutes because I wanted to be there exactly at 4.30. Fair enough. Yeah. But you know we made good time because by the time we arrived at the park, we were like the first ones at the coffee shop. Yeah, we, we, we had... Second. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, the Kenyans beat us. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They left here from the Marriott. And you know what? We saw they were on the flight here. We were on the same flight because I, re I recognized the lady. I, re I recognized her locks. Really? Yeah. I didn't recognize the guy, but I recognized the lady, clearly. Pity that we didn't get a chance to speak more to them and find out what else they got into since, since coming here. Yeah. I know they were from um, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. and a uh, really uh, cool couple. But anyway, um, before that, 
you want to tell them what we're doing? We're having breakfast as well. Because it's the beginning of day 12. Day 11 was so full on that we couldn't record this last night because we had been up since 3.30 <laughs> and had a full day. Yeah. So we're doing this on the morning of day 12 and we're enjoying our dinner, which is what? Tell the people. You yeah. said it tastes better today than it did the other day. We have garlic mashed potatoes. Um, we have a, a medley of mushrooms. But oh, where's the I restaurant have a, that we got it from? From Inca restaurant. That magic, that wonderful restaurant that we were at on Saturday night. Yeah. For our date night. Steakhouse afternoon, slash. Date afternoon. Yeah, steakhouse with a vegan menu, full vegan menu. Mm -hmm. And a whole lot of marvelous sides that you can just order. If you don't eat steak, you can just order all these sides. Their spinach She's, is so good. So many good sides. Mushrooms. Mm -hmm. The chimichurri is really nice. Oh, the starches that we had were nice. You had the... Um, I had mushrooms. Yeah, deep fried mm -hmm. um, battered mushrooms. I had smoked salmon, but sorry guys, we digress. Yeah. Okay, back to the story. <laughs> back to the recap. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I really like the, um, the tours that, that we've been booking, that I booked. Real quickly. Um, they have, they've been like luxury. Like we, we've been getting picked up in like Toyota, um, Land Cruisers, just us. Yeah. Um, private. Yeah. Private cars. Um, the, uh, you know, the drivers have their, um, safari gear on, looks official, you know. They do. Yeah. And, um, um I, I just want to say like Kigali. Or Rwanda and that for that matter because we've been we didn't go around the whole country but we've been south west north and back to Kigali and the cars on the road on the roads are nice like they must have some kind of regulation and laws that that prohibit beaters on the road because I haven't seen a junkie car on the road at all he's right I wouldn't have noticed that. It's funny because you and Adde noticed those things. Yeah. She would have said the exact same thing. I've heard her say that before. Oh, everyone that drives a nice vehicle here. Kind of in like in where we live. Yeah. Mom said that when she came to visit. Oh, oh. I don't see any old beaters out here. It's just everyone <laughs> has a nice car. Yeah, they might be out here somewhere, but I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one other than, I mean, there, there may be some uh, slightly older trucks, but as far as cars goes, and they drive on the same side as the U.S. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's also a plus for people trying to, trying to transition. So I can see why a lot of people um, make uh, Kigali a spot that, you know, expats and diasporans when they move from the States. Public service announcement time. Loads of foreigners are here, guys. I need you all to yeah they're scooping up properties they're scooping up everything they're yeah. taking over because everything's already here all the amenities that you want spas coffee shops notaries like all that kind of stuff that you think you need or would miss or, it's all here health stores yoga st like everything is here so please if you're considering moving to the continent or even just visiting seriously consider coming here because they're extremely open to foreigners and to foreign investment. Yeah, they they um, very welcoming to that. They want people to move here. They, they want do. they want investors. They want they want diasporans. <laughs> they want expats. They're very accommodating, friendly, mm -hmm. and it's really safe here. Like really safe and really clean. And this is the only place that and. Um, since traveling in Africa that I felt 100% safe other than Asmar. Yeah, because Asmara doesn't mess about. Yeah, neither does this country apparently. Neither does this country. <laughs> but, so for even my single ladies, if I can just speak to them for a quick moment. Mm -hmm. My single sisters, A, if you're looking for a partner, plenty of eligible, wonderful uh, bachelors here. And B, if you're worried about relocating somewhere by yourself and would it be safe, I can tell you right now that 
this is this is as safe as it's going to get. It's probably, to be honest with you, safer than where we live. And we live in the DMV in the United States, which is stands for DC, Maryland, and Virginia, right? So, would you agree with that? That it's it couldn't get like that. It's safer than even where we live. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, you can. all I hear on the radio in DC is <laughs> shootings that transpire over, overnight as we're sleeping. Yeah, um, yeah, they've been shooting in the gentrified areas, so you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the women can walk outside at four, three, and four in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, whatever. No one, no one will accost you. Yeah, yeah, nobody's gonna bother, gonna bother you. Um, also, what else did we see? Well, okay, so back to uh, head and head. So we didn't even say where we were going. <laughs> The Mustang was here to take us to Volcanoes National Park, where we can see gorillas in the mist and the wild get up close and personal. But before all that, the ride was about three hours, three and a half hours from our hotel in Kigali to Volcanoes National Park. It was a nice ride. We would sleep for half of it. <laughs> But um, I did, you know, he did stop a couple of times. No, he stopped once and I got out and stretched my legs. It was nice because we haven't, we haven't been in that route. And people were outside, like everybody was outside doing things. People were running. And that's another thing about this country that I love is people are active. I seen so many people jogging, you know, strolling, like getting exercise. I seen women, men, kids teenagers of you know just everybody doing stuff in the morning like everybody's getting their exercise on i seen that oh yeah we're, that's my, i've seen that a lot I, I did see it in nairobi on our way to the um safari there but yeah it was a and the, the scenic like there's so much scenery like around here like this place is beautiful it's just Lush, green, tropical. I think I said that so many times. There's so much vegetation, banana trees, oh man. Coffee uh, trees. Coffee trees. There's so many coffee shops here and people don't even drink coffee like that. Like the locals prefer tea, but there's so many coffee shops <laughs> everywhere. Like, like the specialty coffee shops. Yeah. Small batches, <laughs> well roasted. You know, um, highly skilled barista. Yeah. So, all right. So fast forward three hours later, we we make it to the uh, Volcanoes National Park. They got this big gorilla sign, uh, or big gorilla structure made out of bamboo or wood or something. I think that Paper. I think that was called Cinta or something like that. That area. Where yeah. We, where I, we were, where we were briefed. Yeah, I can't remember. So if that was it, um, but yeah, we're going in the park. Oh, before we got in the park, um, Dama Sin stopped for to let us get out and take some pictures of uh, what was it? It was some some kind of I don't know, it was something scenic. The volcano. The volcano, yeah. And while we while we got out, these kids came up to us and they, they were just like, this happened to us so many times since we've been here, like. Just kids been coming up to us, asking our names, wanting to take pictures with us, wanting to take picture, wanting us to take pictures of them. Um, so we're like, you know, conversing with the kids, and you know, they're like, "How can you share this picture?" They speak English. The young generation are learning English as secondary language, other instead of French. But yeah, so I'm like, I got WhatsApp, and they said, "I have WhatsApp, I have WhatsApp." So, so anyway, so we did that. We got back in the car, got in the entrance of the park, and um, yeah, just lush. Truck. Man, the park is so nice. Like, I was like, this is gonna be a night. This is gonna be the coolest thing ever. And you can see all the um, volcanoes and the hills and the, you know, the. Uh, clouds and the mist over the mountains. It's so beautiful. Um, and there was like a lot of, uh, yeah, there was there was not a lot of people on different tours, but it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a nice group of people that yeah. were there for tours and they broke the tours up by groups. It was great because this is considered low season. 
And frankly, this is gonna be my preferred yeah. season going forward. So, and I, they also offer free complimentary coffee. And that coffee, like, I've, I was just thinking, you know, when they say free coffee, it's like just a big drum of hot water with some coffee powder, <laughs> grind it in there. And uh, like 7-Eleven, it'd be like stuff like that, or like at hotel lobbies, <laughs> those, those or coffee. Or like at conferences, right? Man, Rwanda wins. That's gonna be the hashtag for this whole vlog series on Rwanda. Rwanda, Rwanda wins, wins because <laughs> Well, first, one more thing I want to just backtrack for a second to what uh, Joan said a second ago. Another reason why I think it's it's a good time to come during the low season is because Demacian, our tour guide, actually explained to us that um, very affluent, elite families tend to book out the tours during the high season for their entire families, right? Because it is a very costly excursion um, and they're able to do it for seven, eight, 10, 12 people. They just drop, you know, 10, 15, 20,000. And it's like, they, they take the whole thing because what you guys may not realize that only X amount of permits are issued per year, right? Because they have to protect the gorillas. There's only one hour a day in which they'll allow people to observe the gorillas. They're very much protected as they should be. Otherwise it's too stressful for them. So limited permits, limited amount of time, which means that Unless you're booking out way in advance or you or you know somebody who's in the know that can get you even in during the high season, it might not even be viable if we're being, if we're being completely honest. But for me, I always just prefer having fewer people around anyways. So for us, our size group yesterday was very intimate, very small, and I quite enjoyed that. I couldn't imagine doing it with like 12, 15 people or something like that. Like, it was great, yeah. but back to the coffee shop now. <laughs> Once we pulled up, right, and Damas is like, go ahead. And I walked in, I was like, this is not, this is a coffee bar. This is a hipster style. <laughs> third right in the wave, middle of the park. <laughs> third wave coffee shop. A third wave coffee shop is exactly what I had in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, right? My former coffee shop, which made the New York Times list for best coffee shops, I digress. Um, but it's that kind of coffee shop with highly skilled, Barista, well-grown, cultivated coffee that has been uh, expertly roasted, right? Um, everything has been calibrated from the temperature of the water to the milk, uh, curated with the you know perfect balance of like acidity. And for me, I prefer low acidity. So I sh when I say perfectly balanced, I should say it is very subjective. This particular coffee is um, grown by this company called Question which is women run. And we actually, um, Ishe actually enjoyed their coffee at the um, pastry shop that we went to on Saturday. And he had a whole, when he took a sip, we didn't know this coffee at the time. He's like, whoa, this is really good. He had a whole like reaction to it. He's like, I could drink this coffee every single day. Turns out that that was the same coffee that they were selling, excuse me, that they were pouring for us. And you could have cafe latte, macchiato, flat white, um, Whatever you wanted, a mocha, they had a beautiful full menu, an espresso bar. And you can have as much coffee as you want. So of course I ordered two. I mean, I say that, but he's actually currently enjoying the second one, which is great. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I had ordered the second one to enjoy today. <laughs> and he, at the time, he's the, person, he's the kind of person that if he's full or satiated, he can't think about later and how what he'll need. But I'm Italian, so I'm always planning my next meal. You know, waste <laughs> meals and beverages. So I already knew that I was going to want another one of these delicious coffees because I think I may have had my best mocha yet. So I ordered a second coffee, but it was an African one, which is a mocha plus ginger. Um, he said no. Sure enough, this morning he regretted it. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the reason we're still in our like PJs is because it's about nine o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing this recap as we woke up and we're eating a... Uh, leftovers for our breakfast mm -hmm. um, before we head out and explore some more we only have this is our last day and for I'm, now yeah for now i'm uh i'm sad that we have to leave tomorrow i i should have booked i should have like just had the whole vacation here <laughs> for two weeks <laughs> i'm getting no i should have added a, a couple more days here um but anyway 
We had a great time in Kenya. Oh yeah, definitely. We had a great time, but I'm saying like, I like this. I like it so much here and we, we've been to Kenya, so, but I'll go back to Kenya in a heartbeat anytime, but definitely, definitely this, uh, this place is, it's like right up there on my list. So after the coffee, um, we have a group meeting and we had um, like uh, briefings um, and that went well. Um, there's lots of foreigners from everywhere. Um, in our group, there is, okay, there was a Kenyan couple. There was like a group of uh, four, ja four Japanese men or three. Three. Three Japanese men. They had an interpreter, a Rwandan interpreter and um, that was, wasn't that it? Yeah. That was it. Small. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, cool, this is a small group. That's what I'm saying. It was We're not going It was yeah. season. Like we won't have to like fight for, for pictures or different positions or different areas to take pictures at. Oh, oh and let me tell you the uh, permits for the um, gorilla trekking are not cheap are not cheap at all. Um, especially for, uh, if you're not a Rwandan citizen or Ugandan citizen, I forget, I, I think it's East Africa or Ugandan who gets a discount, it's really low. But if you're outside, if you're a foreigner, the permits are $1,500. So for two, for us two, I had to pay $3,000 <laughs> to, uh, for the gorilla permits and but let me tell you it was worth every penny and that's that's not even i mean that's just a permit so but the guy our, our tour guide and our driver you know that's another charge but you can find you can find any kind of a tour company just go to visit rwanda website you can find a tour company to get a tour or <coughs> tours everyone it's a it's a it's okay a, you wanna and you wanna have Collective. money, yeah. You wanna have money for tips, um, for mm -hmm. porters, and um, you know, for everybody that's gonna help you, and also the trackers or trackers, <clears throat> gorilla trackers. Um, so after our oh, briefing, yeah, that's right, the trackers. Explain to them what that is. Yeah, these guys uh, and women, they go, they track the gorillas, um, they track where they are. Um, they do a job, they're up in the mountains, you know, and they report back, you know, locations, logistics. They, they do a really important job because without them, we, the, the guys wouldn't know <laughs> where to show us, you know? And so you wanna, you wanna tip them also. So we're talking about tips. Okay, so yeah, just have money for tips. But the thing is before, after the briefing, you go, you, um, after the briefing, we get in the car and then we, we leave that part of the park and we go to where, to another part of the park. You have to drive and drive you to another part of the park that goes towards the mountain. And there, when you get out before the, uh, before the tour starts, they ask you, hey, we have these porters here. Um, if anybody needs a porter, they gonna help you with your bags. They gonna just help you, you know, do the, do the trek get one you know don't be cheap and be like nah i don't need even if you just have one bag i only had one backpack between the two of us we only had one backpack i was like at first i was like well i don't need a porter i only have one backpack but um we we looked at each other and we i was looking at the porters and i was like man why don't we just get one you know <laughs> just, let's just get a porter Whew. and uh that was the best thing i could have done because they helped us so much. And the people who, I don't know if they were being cheap or they didn't just didn't want to want a porter, but they, it's good, get a porter. I'm not gonna stress that enough. Get a porter. You only have to give them like a, the equivalent of 15 US. And they, for that, fit, for that money that you tip them, they're gonna help you every step of the way because this is not an easy trek. You're hiking, we're hiking up a mountain, <laughs> and which is, it's a rainforest like, so some, it could be muddy, it could be raining, it could be hot, and then it could be raining, and then it could be hot. Then it can be muddy, then it could be dry. 
they help you. I mean, literally, they hold your hand, they hold your bags. Um, these porters used to be poachers. Did you they say that? They used to be poachers, yeah. yeah. And now the government has incentivized them to yeah. help preserve and conserve, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, the minimum is $10 US. Minimum, yeah. Because they only work for tips. Mm -hmm. But there's no maximum. So if you're able to give them more, these guys work their butts off. John, my porter, he was carrying our bag. He was carrying my Jackets, coat. Jackets, coats. Um, my hand. And on top of that, he had a spare hand with a machete to cut down the bamboo stalks because it is dense. Yeah. One thing we haven't mentioned to you guys is that this is not for the faint of heart. Not everyone can do this trek. Mm -hmm. Please under, please overstand and understand this. <clears throat> we hiked for four hours. I can't track. <laughs> it was two hours uphill, two hours downhill, and none of it was friendly terrain. No. None of it. It was probably the most unfriendly terrain, the most dense terrain I have ever I mean, encountered. Talk personally. about like you you're actually you feel like you're actually in a jungle, like a real It's a jungle. It it's is. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, yeah it is, it is a, jungle. a jungle with no like there aren't any trails or paths or anything like that because you don't know where the gorillas are going to be. It's based on wherever they are. So yeah. if the if the uh, what do they call it in the trackers? Yeah. If they tell us that you know they're northeast side of the mountain, right? And maybe we've not they've not gone up there before. That's why they've got the machetes, these mm -hmm. porters, right? And are chopping and cutting things down and trying to clear a path for you in real time. They're doing that for you. And as a matter of fact, they're so necessary that the tour guides bring brought two extra ones that were not even hired because they knew already that those guys were going to need <laughs> yeah. And in fact, everyone was leaning on them. The Kenyan couple was leaning on them, right? Uh, the Japanese people were leaning on them. So do yourself a, a service. Don't try to skimp out and save because you're city folks, just yeah. like us. Yeah. We're city folks from the West. We have no idea how to traverse through a jungle, and that's exactly what this is, and, is a jungle. <laughs> and the, yeah, and the terrain. And it's beautiful, but it's, beautiful, it's yeah. just not friendly. Yeah, the <laughs> terrain is, uh, you know, there's rocks, there's mud, there's dirt, there's grass, there's bamboo, there's sticky things that go right through your pants. Um, the thorns, everything, thorns, yeah. you know, it's like. And you wanna have, you wanna have like, <clears throat> you wanna have some hiking boots. Um, Alkali Yogi didn't have her boots. She had her uh, Nike trainers, <laughs> and I had, I had my boots, and um, I would still have. And she's a yoga instructor, health practitioner. I'm a runner. I run in the heat. Like I, li I prefer running when it's 80, 90 degrees outside, without water. I don't drink water before I run. I, so I'm used to running, um, you know, between five and six miles without water in the dead heat and I still was having some trouble like I was like tired like getting winded because you're going up the hill and the elevation is is kicking in and like every time we we like got stuck because they had to chop down something I was like thank god I need to I need to rest these few seconds before coming going back up and they give you these hiking sticks that help so that's free but get yourself a quarter um, unless you've done it, you won't get it. Yeah. Honestly, if, unless you've done it, you won't get it. At times you're walking, you're walking vertically. Yeah. It's a very steep incline. It's probably as unfriendly as you're going to get as far as terrain because it's all preservation, right? So they're not clearing stuff out. They're not modernizing it and, and making it quote unquote accessible to humans. That's not their, that's not their intent. It's for the gorillas, it's for nature, right? And we are just coming into their place of habitat to visit and to observe. And so none of it has been cleaned up or anything of the sort. It's been left virtually untouched. I would say it's like very much like virgin territory. We're on their turf. 100%. <laughs> We're on their turf. And, and I'll be honest with you, I was so surprised at the um, exhaustion and the physical exertion that it, it required that I said to Ishe, I don't know how many friends I have that I could even honestly say you should come and do this, that could actually keep up because they walk quickly. They're also on a time uh, schedule, right? So it's like, I was even struggling to keep up. We were the, we were the last two in the back consistently. Yeah. And it was like, <clears throat> they were going quickly over that two hours to come up, right? So what I'm saying is if you've not, if you're not a person that like is active already, 
this is probably not for you. Let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. Um, also, the um, we had two guides. So you got, a, we had a guide in the back, guide in the front. Um, you remember Ange is the yeah. female Ange, guide, yeah. Ange. Ange. And what was the male guide? Um, oh, the guy at the, the head, sort of? Yeah. He was so cool and yeah. so like so knowledgeable and he was joking. He had like, he was so entertaining, but he was like, y'all in the back, y'all need to come up here. <laughs> like y'all want to come, you know? Yeah, because otherwise you're, keep, you're pulling everyone behind. So yeah. there's, there's that pressure to keep up. And we're, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I, we're probably the most fit out of that group. After a while, we ended up being in the front and everybody was falling behind. You just can't like go walking through there. <laughs> I couldn't capture any of it. Ishe did because he had things strapped on and all that, like his yeah. GoPro strapped on. Because you can't be recording. This is probably why I don't know if many that's of have had the chance. That's to why show I was rain. yeah, I was a little behind because I was I was blogging. Right. I was I was capturing stuff, walking, trying to watch my stuff. I was talking to Ange, <laughs> so, yeah. but anyway, yeah. I didn't even pull out my, my camera. I wasn't even trying. There's yeah. too much going on. She know I had it. Because you're constantly covered. having to duck. Yeah, you have, to, you have to, to stoop low yeah. under brush and stuff. You're moving through every plane of motion. You're leaning yeah. back, you're leaning forward, you're going side to just side. Just think about doing burpees. Mm -hmm. It was just a hell of a climb, but once we got to an hour of the climb and we're thinking, yeah, we're here. And he's like, oh, there's another hour. Can you imagine like an hour, <laughs> another hour Steep and you're hot, me. sweaty yeah. and then it gets cool. Then you want to take some layers off and then it gets hot again. Yeah. It was crazy. And because the, the gorillas tend to stay closer to the top because that's where most of their the vegetation that they require is at. So be prepared oh, for that. Not to mention we had a woman with a, um, a rifle because there's also other animals right. that can. Buffaloes. Yeah, buffalo. Elephants. Yeah. If you're fortunate enough to see one of those. Yeah, all kinds. So she yeah. was there to to send warning shots, you know, to scare them off. Yeah. And also the the group needs to stay together because if you're split up, your targets, you know, you you're more of a target. So. Which again is why you need to be fit. Honestly, guys, hundred percent, you have to be fit. If you're sedentary, yeah. you train, and you really want to see the gorillas, which is. 100% worth it. It is 100% worth it. You just, you have to be in good shape and in good health. Yeah, so make a long story short, we got up to the mountain and we discovered this lush bed of tropical greenery with these beautiful black gorillas, just all just having a, you know, just having, enjoying a nice Sunday, relaxing. It was family time. We had the silver back heat. As soon as we got there, he made his presence known. He got up and started walking over towards us and he sat down and I think they said his daughter was was with him. And she was like, he, t he had his back towards us. So he was already comfortable. Like he didn't feel a threat at all. And his we just saw his daughter like, uh, grooming him, like picking things off his back, eating them if she could eat them. We saw little baby, tiny gorillas playing with the mothers. We saw like just a whole family. And this gorilla uh, family was actually, they said was from the Congo. And uh, yeah, we saw another gorilla way down uh, deep uh, who, who was like, she was having her me time. She didn't want to deal with anybody. <laughs> but I was so shocked at how far we were from the gorillas. Like, we could actually touch them if we wanted to. Well, we could, we would not. <laughs> but we were that close where we could reach out and, and do that if it was, you know, they weren't um, strong, ferocious animals. <laughs> but, and we wanted to grab them. Like, we wanted to like cuddle with them. Like that, that's how, it's just so, it was so majestic. Like just, like you're one of few people on earth who can, who actually, you know, get to see gorillas in their natural habitats. And, you know, they were eating and playing and uh, the the uh, leader of the group fell asleep. <laughs> I heard him snoring. <laughs> like he was like, we, and we got to stay with the gorillas for an hour. So 
like like yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Mind. So so keep in mind how long this day is too, right? Because we were up at three thirty, mm -hmm. right? By the time we got to where the coffee shop was on the other side of the park to get to have our first briefing, that was seven thirty till eight thirty. And then from about 8.30 till 10.30, we were climbing. We literally got to the gorillas at 10.30. We were there till 11.30, an hour that went like that. Literally it went so quickly because it was so peaceful and quiet. And we were just, all of us were just watching in amazement. Like people, everyone just like sat down or squatted and just was like, just in a quiet, serene space and just a disbelief as well and awe. Right, because there's so much similarity between us as them and them. Like you can make direct eye contact, which we did. Although, by the way, if they're charging towards you, you're not. You're supposed to then avert your gaze. So, so long as like it's friendly and kosher, it's okay to maintain eye contact. Yeah, they, they gave us the codes, mm -hmm. you know, to the what was the sounds? Mm -hmm. That means everything's oh, good. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, there were no threat. Everything was good. Mm -hmm. So they say it. We say it back to them to kind of reassure them. Mm -hmm. But they'll give you guys all of that information. Yeah. Um, they showed. They were. They showed us what they eat. They. They. They're vegetarians who eat bamboo, and they don't eat drink water out the lake. They break it open, and there's a uh, liquid. There's like water. That's the thistle plant. The thistle plant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that also acts as a kind of like a. Beer or, or wine. Yeah, and medicine. <laughs> and it's medicine. Those things, yeah, yeah it, it keeps them calm and, and relaxed and uh, hydrated at the same time and also enjoyment. Um, they plant little berries and plants and, you know, some certain insects. Um, but yeah, after we saw that, we make, after we saw them, it was time to go. Everybody was like, dang, we want to stay. But that's what I'm saying, you get your money's worth. Like the whole, the permits, I see why, because that's bringing money to the to the economy. It's preserving the wildlife. It's paying people a wage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much they make, but you know, you feel good when you give them a little extra for their, for their services. Yeah. And they're kind, they're nice. Um, and uh, Ange is single. Um, ready to uh, find a man, a boyfriend, whatever. <laughs> she is so, she's a lovely person. She's a ranger at the daytime and uh, beautiful. Uh, but she was, she was nice and she was telling me that she speaks, like she can, she communicates with Congolese, with all the surrounding. She can speak all their languages and um, yeah, she's good. Uh, so then we got down and another hour, and it wasn't even better. It was no better coming back down. It was two hours. I mean, another two hours coming back down, and it was it wasn't even. It, it was just as worse. It was better going down, but it was it was a lot. It was tougher because now you're sliding down when it's when it's wet. You're sliding exactly. down stuff. We thought it was going to be easier, like oh, yeah. we're not going vertically up, but because it is steep, the terrain. Yeah. You also don't have traction. And, and so wet. Yeah, and you need balance. Like yeah. you, you, you kind of. I fell. fell it was a soft landing because of all the vegetation, but I fell. And because John was right there. To <laughs> yeah, but I still <laughs> fell. It was yeah. a full-on fall. And I was behind you. I, yeah. I tried to grab you. And uh, like I said, I wasn't even. I wasn't even tripping that John was holding her hand because you know I, I hired him to help her. <laughs> This is the, I think, the only time that Jones has let another man hold my hand for the ever, and then for the whole day I was holding his hand. Yeah. <laughs> for like yeah. four hours I was holding his hand. So you gotta be, you gotta be a real secure man to, to allow. No, nah. but no, nah, he was he he held her hand when it was it wasn't like he was kept trying to when it was needed. Like no matter what kind of shape you're in, it's good to have a porter with you to carry all your stuff because you don't really want any. You don't really want to be carrying nothing when you're when you're making this trip. Um, so yeah, after that we came down. We had a little briefing. We interviewed some folks. Um, we got in the car and he said, "Oh, we're gonna go to lunch." It was late by that time. It's like what two or three o'clock. It was one thirty when we left. By the time we got to the restaurant, it was close to 2.30. And I remember that we were sitting down and had ordered our food at 3. So, yeah. again, two hours to come down from 11.30 to 1.30. We drove away, got to the restaurant, which brought us closer to Gigali, which was great. Because that meant that we had a shorter trip back to Gigali from the restaurant. 
Oh, um, and um, <clears throat> also stopped. We also stopped to use the bathroom before we got to that restaurant. And when I'm I'm trying to film her coming out the bathroom because I'm like, okay, I'm your paparazzi, and I'm I'm like your I personal videographer, right? I so I was <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm your documentarian, mm -hmm. and because uh, people was looking at us like, you know, we were somebody. So I'm acting the part, and then when I'm doing that, I hear, excuse me. Uh, hello, hello, excuse me. I'm like, oh God, somebody's, um, I'm not supposed to be filming here or something. And then it's like some teenagers and they're like, hey, how are you? And they're like, and I went over to them, hey, how you doing? They're like, what country are you from? Like America, they're like, oh, America, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I'm, uh, I'm studying to be a, um, a science, or they was like some science, like they were in the science and all that stuff. And the other guy was like, yeah, I'm studying to be this. And um, can you take a picture of us? And I took a picture of them. I had one video, I took a picture of them. Um, I, I think uh, they took a picture of me, but that was cool. So anyway, we, we got to this restaurant in this one little town. I think it's where all the guys take the people on the tour. Cause we saw a lot of people that we saw in the morning time. And uh, there was a lot of locals in there. You know, a lot of young, um, would you say like young adults in there, a lot of a lot of girls. So if you single guys, you know, there's there's a lot of pretty women here. <laughs> so, and they really sociable, really fancy, uh, really uh, fashion, fashionable, you know, people and nice, like it was cool. But we had a nice uh, lunch. We bought our driver lunch. Um, that Damasan, we bought him lunch. He was very, very appreciative, and price was like really good. <laughs> it was amazing, Can I just especially say compared to where we're staying in this oh, hotel. Please. Leave the hotel out of it. We, we pay, yeah. $25 and each of us had a wonderful entree. You had fish tacos, I had fish curry, and our Damasian had uh, chicken curry. But I want to just add this. It's not obligatory to buy them lunch, but I think it's a nice gesture if you can manage it. Uh, because they work all day. Um, and, you know, we were up at 3.30. Damasian would have had to be up two hours before us because he, he was an hour away from us. You know, he would have needed to get up earlier to get himself sorted, yada, yada, yada. So these guys work like almost 20 hour days just to make this excursion happen he's been doing it for 12 years he has a family four children we mentioned that earlier so again you know if you're going to do this i would say be prepared to make the financial investment and take care of everyone along the way because it is a cooperative and it requires loads of people mm -hmm. um, and nobody gave us a sob story or anything no no no, no. they're we just, just working yeah it's an exchange of trades and Service, yeah. like of goods and we weren't like right? feeling sorry for them and like oh and they they wouldn't they didn't try to either you know we Which just is what makes Rwanda found out, unique by the way yeah i mean we found out things just by talking you know right. by asking they didn't no 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 one was like i'm, I'm suffering this and that whatever which we were hearing in other places and we know that everyone is having a tough time even the people in the west are having a tough time to be fair so if you're gonna do it you know and it's low season so there's not a lot of um tourists yeah. like they're normally used to and they won't be it won't be high season again until like next april may i think right is that what he said yeah so if, if you're able to you know do those small things like offer them breakfast excuse me offer them lunch you know and take care of them everyone's going to be really appreciative i honestly wish we could have done more um you know we're still very much working class you know so we're working towards that um but we say this to you because many of you uh will have the means to be able to do more and if you can um i think it would be appreciated yeah they um, work for it they earn it at the end of the day yeah and he gave us he gave us a few uh you know some uh tour tour advice along the way not advice he was Tips. telling us some tour things yeah he was telling us stuff about things we were mm. seeing <clears throat> so yeah so two hours it was two hours from that restaurant right to Kigali and then on the way I'm like he was like you guys want to see anything else anything else I need to show you like you want me to drop you off somewhere you want to go see something and, and I'll wait for you and I was like no we just want to go home we like we've been up I know I'm like how do you still have energy <laughs> like he was doing the driving we was doing the sleeping you know in the in this in the car but 
um, no, we we enjoyed ourselves, and he was just so gracious, gracious, and you know we gave him a little interview. Uh, he, you know, contact him when you out here. Um, he works for Hermosa Hermosa Tours, and that's the that's the uh, that's who you should hire because it's a one class. They're very um, quick response. Like when you WhatsApp them, they get back to you really quick. Because I was worried about that because you never know when you go somewhere, um, if you want to do something, you try to contact them. It's like, damn, I only got a couple of days left. I ain't heard back from them. But yeah, really, uh, everybody's pretty pretty honest. I, I heard there's very stiff penalties for doing, you know, taking rides and doing all kinds of nefarious stuff. So anyway, we got back about six or five. 5.30, which was the first time that we had been back in our room with daylight still out. It was wonderful. Yeah, but we was yeah. we was spent exhausted. And so she's donating her uh, Nikes and I'm donating my polo boots. Um, they're, they're, you know, all somebody has to do is clean them up. And I know plenty of people here can clean these shoes off and, you know, make them nice looking. So we just- Like they did in a smile? Yeah, yeah. All right, um, that was it for this recap of day 11. Um, our time with the gorillas and our tour uh, of Volcanoes National Park. Uh, we want to go in another season where we can see all the uh, other animals, you know. So with that being said, we're going out to explore before it gets too late. And uh, we will see y'all on the next recap and enjoy our videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and um, you know, tell your friends about us. We might be in a city near you. <laughs> That's how we ended up here. Yep. Viewers, a viewer reached out to us and said, hey, you guys should come out here. Yep. Who? And it's actually who we're gonna go and spend the day with, so we have yeah. to go. We're gonna have Injera today. Yeah. All right, we will talk to y'all later. Bye.